It's fact or fiction based on rumors that came out of last week's combine. We're going to look at the top three rumors and discuss the possibility of them happening, the pros and the cons. That's coming up next on the Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked on Giants podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast family, your team every day. My name is Patricia Trena, and welcome to a new week of Locked on Giants episodes. We're going to have a really busy week this week, and I'm going to tell you everything that we've got planned for you this week. But first, as always, let me thank you for making us your first listen of the day, or if you are watching us on YouTube, your first watch of the day. And again, we are free on YouTube. We are also free wherever you get your podcasts. So on today's show, uh, we're going to kind of recap the combine. And specifically on today's show, we're going to talk about some of the rumors, some of the scuttlebutt that came out of the combine as it pertains to the Giants. And I'm going to look at three top stories and I'm going to kind of weigh in and give you what my take as to whether I think it's going to happen, whether it won't happen, uh, what's it going to take to make it happen and so on and so forth. So that is what is on tap for today's show. Before I get into today's show first, uh, I want to thank everybody for their feedback on my first round a mock draft. I know a lot of you guys were, were sitting there going, what the heck are you thinking, Pat? Guys, look, it was thinking outside the box. It was not me saying that the Giants don't need an offensive lineman. They do need an offensive lineman. If it makes you feel any better, folks, I've got a three round mock draft that's dropping on Giants country. And yes, there is an offensive lineman in that three round mock draft. I'm not that foolish, you know? I mean, I just had to go based on the boards and I did use a different board uh, for for this three round mock draft that's on Giants Country. And if you want to check that out, um, that should be dropping around, um, I'm guessing around eight o'clock in the morning on Monday. So uh, check it out. And I think you might like that draft a little bit better. And uh, also appreciate all the feedback. A lot of you told me what you would do. And, uh, you know, I read all the comments that came back and, and uh, yeah, I, I, you know, at the end of the day, look, as long as the Giants get good players, I'm happy, you know, whether they come from a big school, a small school, whether they're offensive tackle, guard, center, edge rusher, this team needs so much that, um, you know, it, it, how do you go wrong, really? So um, I'm looking forward to it. And there's going to be a lot of mock drafts coming up. I'll probably do a mock draft at some point again on this show, but I'll go a little bit deeper. I probably won't just do uh, one round. I'll probably do three rounds, but I'm going to wait and probably until after free agency, the first, the initial wave of free agency. Um, for now, like I said, if you want to read the, the mock draft that I did over on Giants Country that does have an offensive lineman in it, head on over GiantsCountry.com and uh, it should be up by eight o'clock in the morning. So, all right, before we get into the rumors, and whether or not I think they're going to come to fruition. Real quick, I want to give you the program lineup for this week because I'm really, really excited about it. So amongst the guests that I have booked for this week, we're going to come on, talk about the combine, the draft prospects, uh, different rumors that might affect the Giants and so forth and so on. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have Coach Gene Clemens, who has been on the show before with me. He's been doing uh, all the draft write-ups over at Giants Country, been doing a really great job. Uh, Tony Pauline, who is an NFL insider for Pro Football Network, he's going to be on the program with me this week. Um, I have Jordan Reed from ESPN, the newly signed Jordan Reed, who used to be on Pro Football Network uh, I think it was Pro Football Network. It was either that or the Draft Scout. But anyway, he is with ESPN now, and he's going to be on with me. He is scheduled to be on with me this week. And along the way, I have that interview coming up with a current member of the Giants defense, a guy who should be on the roster this coming year. So uh, that one you'll just have to wait to find out who that person is. But uh, that's that's an interview that I'll be taping on Tuesday, and I'm looking forward to that. So um 
a lot of stuff coming up. Oh, and before I forget, the grand finale for the week will be a live two-hour show on Friday starting at 11 a.m. with, you guessed it, the Entertainer. That's right, the Tana is back on social media. He is back on YouTube. And we are going to take your questions for two hours starting at 11 a.m. on Friday. Anything you want to talk about, Giants related, NFL related, we're going to do it. Uh, we hope you'll join us. So it's a jam-packed week here for us at the Locked on Giants podcast. Appreciate you listening. So, all right, let me get into the rumors because that's what the, the show was all about. So let's get into that. Uh, kind of a fact or fiction thing. So number one, the Saquon Barkley trade. Now, I do not think the Saquon Barkley trade is going to happen, despite the fact that I would not be upset if it happened, despite the fact that Joe Shane left the door open for it to happen. Um, there's many reasons why I, I can't see this trade potentially happening. Starting with, I don't think the Giants will get the type of value that they want for Saquon Barkley if they trade him. Now, I had seen someplace, somebody said that the Giants were looking to get a, a first round pick for him. I don't think that I believe that, but I would imagine the Giants would want at least a day two pick for, uh, for Barkley. And Barkley, as we know, coming off the, the ankle injury, coming off year one removed from the, um, from the ACL injury, didn't really look himself last year. And if you were an NFL team, do you really want to take that gamble? Do you want, do you want to maybe, you know, take that gamble, give up a premium draft pick for a guy that you don't know right now if he's going to be explosive again, if he's going to be productive as he was as a rookie? That to me is a big, big gamble for somebody. Now, the other thing is, is, you know, he's got the 7.2 million guaranteed contract. So if a trade is made and you're the Giants, you know, you may very well have to pick up half of that salary, which kind of defeats the purpose of moving him. So now there's the other aspect of it. And the other aspect of it is, is Barkley may not get re-signed after this year, assuming that he stays with the Giants, that is. He probably will not get re-signed to a long-term lucrative deal. So the Giants, if they let him walk, would potentially be looking at a high comp pick depending on, you know, what Barkley signs for with a new team. It's not going to help them, basically, for at least another year, another two years, actually. So, you know, there's a school of thought, if you can move them now, do so, get something, anything for them now. Or if you're going to wait, maybe you get the highest possible comp pick. There's another factor here that we got to talk about, and that is the whole that, that would be left if Barkley were traded, all right? So right now, Barkley is being counted on to be a part of the offense. Head coach Brian Dable spoke about how they have plays put into the playbook that they're developing for Barkley. You remove him from the, the equation. How do we know that uh, one of these rookies in, or, or a free agent even is going to be um, able to step in and give them the type of production that Barkley is capable of giving them? We don't. So the Giants are likely going to play it safe and not move Barkley. There's just, you know, this is also a make or break year if you think about it for Daniel Jones. And when you start taking away potential weapons that can help him, it's just it just doesn't add up. So there are advantages of moving Saquon Barkley from the cap savings to the fact that, you know, you would get something that potentially to use right away in this year's draft if you wanted to. And then there are drawbacks to moving him. So bottom line, fact or fiction, the Giants will trade Barkley. I think it's fiction, folks. I just don't see it happening. Even though I can make a case for it, and I have made a case for it, I just don't think it's a realistic scenario. 
All right, Giant fans, we have more coming up on today's Locked on Giants podcast. But first, Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, but without the calories and without the sugar. Most Built Bars contain about 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein, making it easy to fit into any diet plan. And they're available in nut and nut-free variety with nine main flavors, as well as a limited selection of rotating flavors that you can find out about on their website, Built Bar.com. So head on over to that website, BuiltBar.com. Use our special promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, and save 15% off your first order. Again, that code is LOCKED15 for 15% off only at BuiltBar.com. All right, Giant fans, welcome back to the Locked on Giants podcast. Patricia Trainer here with you, and we're doing a factor fiction based on the uh, three hottest rumors to come out of the NFL Combine last week. And we just finished talking about Saquon Barkley, and, you know, I don't expect to talk about Saquon Barkley being traded every show, just so you know. Um, you know, I might mention it to a guest or something like that, but uh, I just don't see it happening. So now the trade that I do see potentially happening is that of James Bradbury, who is being rumored as being on the uh, on the trade market. Now, um, Bradbury's situation is a little different in that he's been durable. He's only missed one game since signing with the Giants, and that one game he missed was because he came in, in close contact with somebody that tested positive for COVID, which put him, in turn, on the reserve COVID list. He's one year removed off of a Pro Bowl season, and, you know, you look at his play, yes, it dropped off last year, but so did the entire defense. So Bradbury, to me, has more value. And he's also got a big contract, but if he is traded, the acquiring team will not have to absorb that entire contract. Um, I'm just look, checking to see what his number is real quick here. James Bradbury has a number currently of $21.863 million. Of that, only um, $13.4 million is his base salary. So if the Giants were to move him, the acquiring team would only be on the hook for $13.4 million, of which $2 million will be guaranteed as of March 19th. Um, which is basically his base salary. Oh, and he has a hundred dollar workout, hundred thousand dollar workout bonus. Um, so actually, it's thirteen point five if you if you throw that in. The Giants, on the other hand, would would save the twelve point one three six million, but they would also be on the hook for the remaining signing bonus, which is uh, nine point seven two seven plus. Uh, no, I'm sorry. The total would come to nine point seven. To seven million. That's with the 1.363 million that goes into 2023. So the signing bonus would accelerate into this year's cap if Bradbury is traded prior to June 1st. That move makes sense. All right. The cornerback group is pretty deep. The Giants could be in a position to grab themselves a cornerback to play that vacant position if Bradbury is moved. The other thing that you've got to ask yourself, and this is, you know, I'm not sure what the coaches think about this or if they've discussed this, but you kind of have to throw it out there for what it's worth. Aaron Robinson is on the roster. Now, last year, Aaron Robinson, small sample size because he was injured. The other thing with Aaron Robinson is he was drafted out of uh, UCF as a slot cornerback. That's the position he primarily played in college. So the coaching staff, this coaching staff, do they think of Robinson as just a slot cornerback? Or do they maybe think that he could handle the outside if they were to move on from Bradbury? So that's a decision we don't know. We don't know the answer to that question. But depending on how the coaches think, that could be a possibility. The Giants, like I said, because this is a deep cornerback class in this draft, maybe they pick up a, dra a, a cornerback, depending on how the board falls. Um, I would not be upset at all if they somehow landed with Sauce Gardner. I mean, I'm really liking that kid from what I've seen from him. Um, you know, I would, 
I don't know that I would take him at five, but maybe later on in the draft, you know, if he's available and the appropriate deal could be worked out. But um, there are options is what I'm getting at. So, yes, I could see a scenario where James Bradbury gets moved. Now, what would you get for James Bradbury? Well, my guess is, is he could probably fetch you at least a third round pick and a conditional fifth would be my guess. Um, the conditional pick being for 2023. I don't think I would include it in this year. So, you know, I do think there could be a market for him. And I do think that if the Giants are going to look to move him, it's going to be sooner or later. All right. Regardless, folks, there is no way the Giants are going to carry James Bradbury and a 21.863 million cap hit on their books this year. They can't. They have got to get that number down. Now, could they also say to Bradbury, we're going to restructure you? They could, but in this case, I wouldn't. I mean, they've already amended his contract to where he's got a voidable year on 2023. So what are you going to do? Add another voidable year just to spread the, the converted money out? No, you don't want to do that. You can't even go to him and say, hey, take a pay cut. Because, again, he's coming off of a, a year in which he was healthy and he contributed. So as I see it, the choices are either cut him straight out and get nothing in return or look to move him. I do think the Giants will look to move him. And I would kind of be surprised if they don't move him. Um, he's, he's still a good cornerback. And, um, you know, the Giants have options because, look, I always tell you guys, if you're going to cut somebody or trade somebody, you better have a plan to replace that person. I think the Giants have options to replace James Bradbury if they need to. So, you know, and, and then finally, you know, with regards to James Bradbury, because he has that voidable year in 2023, you know, potentially he walks away. Let's say you keep him on the roster this year, which again, I don't see happening. He walks away. Then you're in the same kind of scenario with Saquon Barkley and that now, you know, you you maybe will get yourself a comp pick. So now nah, look to move him if you can, if you're the Giants. And that's what I think they're going to do. All right, Giant fans, we have more coming up on today's Locked On Giants podcast. But first, betonline.net is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. BetOnline.net is also the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news, whether it's basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC, plus your favorite Vegas games. Head on over to the website today to learn more about the trends and the action. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, Giant fans, welcome back to the Locked on Giants podcast. Patricia Trainer here with you. And uh, for those of you who popped in on this third segment, we are doing a fact or fiction combine rumor edition of the show. We are talking about the three biggest rumors to emerge from the combine as they pertain to the New York Giants. I'm giving you my take as to whether I think it's fact or fiction and why. I'm also looking at the pros and cons of each and just trying to determine what's going to happen and what's not going to happen. But again, I want to remind you that this week we've got a jam pack podcast. We've got guests galore. Coach Gene Clemens is going to join us. Um, Jordan Reed of ESPN is scheduled to join us. Tony Pauline, NFL insider, is scheduled to join us. And I'm going to have an interview with a New York Giants defensive player, a current player, who should be on the roster in 2022. And we're going to talk about last year. We'll talk about Don Martindale. We'll talk about a whole bunch of things. So looking forward to all that. And then on Friday, we are going to have a two-hour live show with the entertainer. That's right. Chris Guzzo is back. He will be with me starting at 11 a.m. We will take your questions since this week I'm not going to have time to do, or not time, but I'm not going to have a slot open to do a Twitter Tuesday mailbag with you. But we'll do it on Friday with Chris and uh, we'll just keep on plugging away, guys. Just a lot of stuff to cover. We'll just let everything kind of play out a little bit and uh, hope you will tune in because really, you know, I'm excited about the content that's coming out and I hope you are as well. All right, we've got one more combine rumor that came out 
pertaining to the New York Giants. And this one, I'm not really shocked about this one, but I'm trying to kind of grasp the, the logic behind it. And this particular rumor is that the Giants will make a pitch to pending Bills free agent quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky. Now, before I go any further, yes, the Giants need to get a quality backup quarterback. All right, right now, we don't know where Daniel Jones is with his neck. All right, is he recovered? Is he going to definitely be recovered by the, by the time uh, the season rolls around? We don't know the answer to that. All right, I don't know that the Giants know that for sure. They might have a better idea, but whether they know it for sure, that's another story. We also know, based on Daniel Jones's history, that he's injury prone. And we cannot afford to have another scenario where he misses time and then guess what? You've got this, this you know, poor backup that comes in that can't, you know, quarterback his way out of a paper sack. Can't have that. Um, the Giants, they did sign Davis Webb from the Bills. Um, whether or not he's the number two, I don't know the answer just yet. Um, I don't know if the plan is to bring back Jake Fromm whom the Giants poached off the Bills practice squad. But let's talk about Trubisky here. All right, now I see pros and cons to this. The pros, obviously. Trubisky has a little bit better record. I think if he had to play for the Giants, the quarterback play would not be too bad of a drop-off. I think they could definitely win with him. I also think that he can come in here and give Daniel Jones that little push that he needs, that he hasn't had since being drafted number six overall in 2019. You know, if the coaches are going to sit there and say, oh, we believe in competition, if Joe Shane's going to sit there and say, I want competition across the board, well, hi, Daniel Jones needs to have competition as well. All right, that's just how I feel. You can't have competition at, at you know, certain spots where the pictures may be less muddied and not have it at others. Doesn't work that way as far as I'm concerned. All right, so those are some of the cases for Mitchell Trubisky. Now, here's some of the uh, arguments against him. Number one, the money. All right, now, according to reports, Washington and Pittsburgh are two of the teams that are potentially interested in Mitchell Trubisky. Both of those teams, by the way, are looking to upgrade at starting quarterback. You know, Pittsburgh just had Ben Roethlisberger retire. Uh, Washington has been looking to upgrade at quarterback for at least a couple of years now. All right, so those two teams, I believe, are actually in a better position to throw starter money at Mitchell Trubisky. The Giants are not. Now, could they maybe do something to, to fit Trubisky under the cap? They sure could, and I'll tell you uh, about that in just a second. But you bring in a guy like Trubisky, and if you're paying him low-level starter money, wouldn't you want him to be starting? I mean, you know, the odds say that Daniel Jones, if he's, if he's ready to go, probably won't make it through a whole season, and that you will have to pay or put Trubisky in there or whoever the backup is at some point. Do you want to take that get that gamble knowing that your cap dollars right now are very precious? That's something I don't know if the Giants are willing to do. But I mentioned there's a way they can make this work from a cap perspective. And that way is actually something they did back in 2004 with Kurt Warner. Now, if you remember back then, Kurt Warner was cut by the Rams. The Giants signed Kurt Warner to a two what was a two-year contract i think the first year he was for three million the second year was for six million All right this was in 2004 which was eli's rookie year but they gave warner a player option year which basically went into effect if warner met certain criteria and the criteria i don't remember what the criteria were but I do remember the criteria being ridiculously easy. It could have been something as simple as being on the opening day roster. Um, you know, it could have been something like, uh, I don't know, taking X percentage of the practice snaps. I, I don't remember what they were, to be honest with you. 
I do know that it was ridiculously easy and Warner obviously triggered that option. Not only did he trigger it, he, he uh, exercised it. And the Giants, for whatever um, signing bonus they gave to him, that money prorated over the life of the contract, the two years, but Warner um, was free to go on and, and, and move on to another team, which he did. So I could see a scenario like that to fit Trubisky under the cap um, where they could take the signing bonus, you know, maybe give him, um, I don't know, two, two point, well, he made 2.5 last year with the bills. So maybe give him about 3 million and then like a, a, a signing bonus of, I don't know, 5 million, which would bring him up to about eight, but split the signing bonus over two years. You could also maybe throw in some playtime incentives in the first year of the deal if you wanted to, although those would be likely to be earned incentives, which would bump up the, uh, the salary cap number. The point is, is if the Giants wanted to do it with Trubisky, make the money work, there is a way to do it. And I just kind of outlined what that way is. All right. Now, I mentioned um, Trubisky would give Daniel Jones a little push. But here's the thing. If... Daniel Jones got off to a bad start. If Daniel Jones turned in a couple of clunkers, how long do you think until people started calling for Mitch Trubisky and we had a full-blown quarterback controversy on our hands? Do the Giants really want that? You know, look, competition is good. I'm not saying that it's not. But do you really want to have the chance of, you know, there being a full-blown quarterback competition, you know, a quarterback controversy once the season starts. If that's the case, folks, then, then, you know, gosh, I, it could get ugly. Now, with that said, let's be realistic. Does anybody think the Giants are going to make the playoffs next year? I don't. And I'm not just saying that to be a pessimist. Realistically speaking, they've got so many holes and so many things they need to address. I don't see them getting everything done. You know, I, I do think they'll have a better record than they had this past year, but I don't see them getting everything done and ready to go. All right. I think they will be a playoff team maybe by 2023. So there are pros and cons to signing a Mitchell Trubisky. You know, another pro I didn't talk about is if Daniel Jones turns out not to be the guy or his neck flares up again or another injury pops up. Now you've got somebody who can be your starter and, and get you through to 2023 when the quarterback class in the draft is going to be a little bit better than this year's class. So it's really a difficult decision. And in terms of if it's going to be fact or fiction, I'm going to say fiction. And the reason why I'm going to say fiction is because of the cap. Now, I know I just outlined a way it could work, but I would rather they take the resources, not, not have to pay a, a quarterback number two, you know, low level starter money that could amount to like an $8 million cap hit. I'd rather they spend that at another position, like a veteran offensive lineman, for example. So, you know, a backup quarterback, I'm figuring, you know, to get a decent one, maybe it's going to take about at least $3 million, um, just straight up $3 million. And uh, I think that would get it done. But, uh, you know, geez. I don't know who they would necessarily go for. You know, I mentioned Marcus Mariota in the past. I don't know if Mariota intends to stay with the Raiders or if he feels he could be a starter. Um, th there are other options out there, but, you know, whoever the Giants do pick for quarterback two, he's got to be a lot better than what they had last year. I mean, that goes without saying because that was just bad. And uh, this is a tricky one for Joe Shade and Brian Dable um, to navigate because look, neither one of them are married to Daniel Jones. Um, they have both acknowledged in the past that Daniel Jones hasn't had the best setup in the world. 
and they're going to try and fix that. You know, Dable has gone on record as saying that he's he sought Daniel's input as to how to create an offense that fits him, which is another sign to me that maybe they won't, you know, bring in a guy who could potentially start ahead of him and that they also, by the way, feel good about his neck. But um, things change in a hurry, folks. So this one, I'm saying fiction, but certainly worth keeping an eye on, I think, in my opinion. So, all right, Giant fans, that's going to do it for me here on the Locked on Giants podcast. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. Schedule to join me, Coach Gene Clemens. We're going to talk combine. We're going to get all his impressions from the combine, some ideas he has about what the Giants can do, and so much more. Make sure you tune in and make us your first listen of the day or your first watch of the day if watching on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, or listening. We will catch you tomorrow.